Hi folks, uh, I was contacted online and asked is it possible to do a, like a, almost like a virtual detent for games like Starship Citizen or Elite Dangerous. Um, now I haven't played Elite Dangerous in quite a while, I've never played Starship Citizen. But from my understanding, what the question basically was, is there some way of having a detent in the middle of the throttle axes? So is um, in the middle area, uh, your, your spacecraft is stationary. When you push the throttle forward, then it moves it forward. You move it back to this, the middle position. Then it goes stationary and you pull it back. Then it reverses. So you've got forward and backward movement control. Now... With a detent, that would be a physical detent, which is no longer on the vertebral kit. Uh, you could set it in the middle zone and, you know, you'd be able to feel a bump whenever you're um, you're in the zone, so to speak. So um, I'm going to show you how to use the vertebral configuration software to set this up. Um, I do suggest before you do any fiddling around with configuration and whatnot, you always make sure you have a backup of how, what your config on your device is right now. You can go and see my other tutorial how to do that. I've already done that first because I play it safe. So let's load up the software. The usual warning about having two devices connected. Now remember if you're doing firmware or profile stuff, um, like setting up a new device, it is generally advisable to only have one connected. I'm only fiddling around with some config stuff today, so that's not a big problem. First up, select my throttle and then load. That will pull the configuration from the throttle into the software and then I can start filling with it. I'll go to the axis tab. Now I notice I'm in pro mode, the little button here is lit. That's light mode. If you need to go to pro mode for this, you'll have to, so click the pro button. Right, so here's our axis. Now before I begin, a couple of points. There are four models of verbal throttle available or have been available. I have the original V1, uh, there's the V2, the CM, which is the V3, and the CM2, which is the V4. Now, V1, V2, and V4, that's the CM2, has a physical lock detect. Now, my V1 has it as well. It's on button one. I think it's on button eight on the new CM2s, and what that means is Whenever the little slider that locks both handles together is locked in position, so as both handles move simultaneously, a button press is activated. And this little controller here basically says, look, when this button's active, I want you to copy axis 1 into axis 2, which means that these two values, which is your, um, your left and your right throttle, will always be in sync. Now what I'm going to do today is I'm going to configure the right hand throttle to be used for this functionality, this um, forward and backward with a dead zone in the middle. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach over, unlock the throttle handle, so it's they can be moved independently. Now, our Y is our right hand throttle axis, so I double click on it, brings us to this. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change some configuration stuff. First off, I'm going to change it to with center and then I'm going to run the calibration. So it's all the way back at zero, push it all the way forward, all the way back a couple of times. You can see the process values going up and down. And then I'm going to put it exactly 50% in the middle. And there she is. Then I'm going to click set center and then stop. Now, what that means is that I've told this, look, you're an, um, an axis that has a center position. This is generally only used for the likes of the joysticks because it does have a physical center position. So when you take your hand off a stick, the spring will push it back into the center position of 50%. Next, I'm going to go and do this dead zone. Now, the middle dead zone here, I'm going to set that to 10%, which is 10% of travel. So... You notice these little lines appear here. So what it means is if I get in the, 50, the approximately the 50% zone, there's going to be a guard band on either side of it that I'll have to move outside before uh, movement will be uh, detected again, or at least presented to the operating system. So I'm going to click Save, and then Save VPC Device to send it to the, uh, the throttle.
Now there is a reason why I picked the right hand and I'll show you at the end why I've done that. Okay, so let's have a wee look at the VPC Joy Tester. So I've whitened out all the other axes so as I can actually see the RY. I'll just give it a wee wiggle. You can see there she is. So I'm going to gradually bring it up. It gets into that dead zone and you can see it's reporting like pretty much nothing. It's basically been clamped at the 50% value and I push her a wee bit forward and now she starts out again. So you can see yourself, there's a little guard band in the middle there, which is controlled by that dead zone. And that can be set to whatever value you want it to be. I've just went for 10. The maximum I think is 15. So that's gonna be 15% of travel. So what this does is this gives you a little guard band in the middle. As long as you get the axes roughly in there somewhere, then it will stop any movement forward and backward and clamp it. And the reason why I decided to pick the right axis uh, is because it's got the most buttons on it. And it also means if I put the two of them together again, so I've pulled them physically together and I lock them, now, when I move them forward and backward, it ignores that dead zone because it's basically copying axes one into axes two as per this configuration here, which means um, I might not have to save and load the profile here that I've just created and swap it around if I'm maybe doing a flight sim and then I want to go and play Elite Dangerous. So this might be the easiest way of trying this out. Now there is another way of doing this using Joystick Gremlin, uh, which I may or may not do a video on if I'm feeling frisky. So. There you go, if you want to have a play with that, that's how to basically set this up. Um, if you have a V1, V2 or CM2. If you have a CM, because there's no detect switch, you're probably going to get some weird stuff happening in here. So, uh, your mileage may vary. I don't have one to try it out with, so honestly don't know. But this is how I could set it up on my kit. Hope this helps. Here's another view of the um, the change that I just made. So Y rotation is defined as the right hand um, throttle handle. And you can see I bring it up. That's 50%. I'm still pushing it forward. I'm in the dead zone now. It's not moving. And then it starts moving. And that's all the way 100% forward. So that's another view of it there in the Windows uh, Joystick controller.